It's Monday in America, and the shenanigans have not let up. Republicans are calling for the expulsion of Representative Maxine Waters, Democrat from California, affectionately called Auntie Maxine by some, because they said she said things that caused the blacks to get riled up. Now, in politics speak, they claim that Waters incited violence, but in you-know-what-they-mean language, you know that's what they really mean. It all stems from comments that Representative Waters made when she was speaking to people protesting the police killing of Dante Wright in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, where I'm guessing she was invited to speak. And Waters said, quote, I'm going to fight with all of the people who stand for justice. We've got to get justice in this country and we cannot allow these killings to continue. She went on to say that we've got to stay on the street and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they know we mean business. And because the police killing of Wright happened just as the trial against Derek Chauvin was entering the last days of defense arguments, Waters said that, quote, I hope we're going to get a verdict that will say guilty, guilty, guilty. And if we don't, we cannot go away, end quote. And because some random person fired shots at National Guard troops occupying Minneapolis in the early hours of Sunday morning, Republican minority leader Kevin McCarthy said that Maxine Waters is inciting violence in Minneapolis just as she has incited it in the past. If Speaker Pelosi doesn't act against this dangerous rhetoric, I will bring action this week. Well, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know her, the far-right extremist Trump acolyte who said she champions, quote, Anglo-Saxon political traditions, end quote, has already announced that she will introduce a resolution to expel Waters. And GOP Twitter is tripping all over themselves, accusing Waters of inciting violence, inciting a riot, and even some folks claiming that she is inciting Get this, an insurrection. I didn't think those folks knew what that word meant. I didn't think they knew what it was, considering that they acted as if their dear leader Trump didn't do that with his rabid fascist mob on January 6th. White politicians who still have not admitted that the fascist attack on the U.S. Capitol was a result of their white supremacist leader pushing the Anglo-Saxon values that they love because of the lie about a stolen election, now going after a Black politician for basically reiterating what the people in the streets have already been saying and doing. You know what this is. It's American politics in its white supremacist hypocritical glory. Let's just call that what it is. And of course, the world is waiting the outcome of the trial of Derek Chauvin in Minneapolis, even as people in Chicago take to the streets to protest the police killing of 13-year-old Adam Toledo. People in Brooklyn Center, Minneapolis, are protesting the police killing of Dante Wright. Protests are happening across the country in solidarity, and they're all met by the typical excessive police presence and repression. But something is a little different this time. My husband and I were watching CNN this weekend and the journalists who were covering the Dante Wright protests in Brooklyn Center commented about how the police assaulted journalists there. They pepper sprayed them, forced them to lie on the ground, arrested them, assaulted them. Two CNN journalists were clearly angry and shaken by the treatment they saw their colleagues subjected to. And they both made comments that I, I honestly had never heard corporate journalists make, at least not recently, that if the police are doing this to us, the journalists, and we are clearly identified as journalists, what do you think they're doing to the people? They said this on CNN. Now, in response to the criticism of the repression of journalists, Minnesota police on Saturday promised, they promised, not to detain, threaten, or rough up journalists covering protests anymore. And the Minnesota State Patrol also agreed to stop photographing journalists and their credentials and will no longer order reporters where they can position themselves to cover the demonstrations. They also say that they will exempt journalists from curfew mandates. 
So they basically admitted they were doing all of these things by promising not to do those things they were caught doing to journalists anymore. But to the CNN journalist's point, what promises are the cops going to make about how they treat everyone else? You and I know the answer to this. None. They're not going to make any promises. That's why what Maxine Waters said is right. And not because she said it, but because we've been saying this all along. We've got to stay in the streets and let them know we mean business. And the business we are after is justice and revolution. We can get neither by being silent and polite. Follow Lukeman Nation on Patreon.com slash Nation for lots of great content.